Good morning. Glad you can be with us. Well, looks like another nice day. Not too hot, not too cold. Nice morning to drive to work, which most of the folks out this side of town do. Certainly has built up out here in the last few years. Of course, it's the automobile made it possible. Driving, we're only 20 minutes from downtown and from our eternal reward. Next few minutes, we're going to meet some of the people down there. None of them are at all unusual. No tycoons or movie stars or financiers. They're just ordinary, everyday people. In fact, one of them will likely be a lot like you. One thing they have in common is they all drive automobiles. They're good drivers, too. Oh, they may get a ticket now and then, but it'd just be for some minor violation. Nothing they'd consider really dangerous. These are like folks we know. And those that kill and get killed are just names in the newspaper. A little ways up the next street, we're going to meet the Sheridans. Peggy, uh, Mrs. Sheridan, that is, used to be a lot of fun. But her husband, Ed, died last year and didn't leave her much but the two youngsters. Hasn't been too easy getting along. Peggy and the kids live in the left-hand front bungalow. Oh, and my car keys. Now, Kathy, lunch is in the refrigerator. You'll just have to eat it up. And that uh, address. Take good care of Billy. You might let him play in that vacant lot. I guess it's too warm for my coat. I hope I've got enough gas. Now, don't forget Billy's nap right after lunch. I hate to have you miss school, Kathy, but we'll get a sitter as soon as Mother gets a job. Now, I'll be home by 5 o'clock, sure. Clean up the breakfast dishes. Goodbye, Billy. Be a good boy. Kathy. Yes, Mother? Is my petticoat showing? No. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mama. What's the matter, Kathy? Do you feel all right? You didn't kiss me goodbye. Darling, darling, darling. Mother didn't mean to. It's just... Well, this last year, you've had to help out so much, you've been more like a sister than my little girl. But we'll make up for it soon. You'll see. Everything will be wonderful. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Oh, my purse. Kathy, playing hooky today, huh? Uh-uh. Mama's gone downtown. I had to stay home and take care of the baby. Hey, what's keeping you, Holly? I haven't got all night, you know. I had to hunt up your briefcase. Well, I thought as long as you were going out selling it, it'd be kind of nice to have your price book. Let's go, darling. I haven't got all night, you know. Nice young couple, aren't they? Name is Shelby, Pat and Holly. Nice little car, too. The company supplies it. Pat's a salesman for the West Side Lumber Company. Holly works, too, at one of the big department stores downtown. And this is the last bus stop where Pat can drop her off before he turns west. They're still so fresh Mary, they kind of shy about kissing in public. Now, the family will meet next, named McCall. Mr. McCall, Tom. He's worked up a neat little insurance business, which he hopes young Buddy will take over when he grows up, if he grows up. That's Bud's hot rod in the driveway, also known as a soup job or a hop up. And despite the ramshackle appearance, it has been clocked at 110 miles per hour. If you think I'm going to make three separate breakfasts every morning, you're greatly mistaken. Now, buddy, remember, you're to come right straight home from school today. 
Hang it, buddy. Do you have to eat like a disposal? Mr. Crowley hasn't been here for two weeks, and the lawn looks like a hayfield. Ah, oh, Christmas. I promised Bets I'd take her to the Belmar game. You heard your mother. The lawn isn't cut, your allowance will be. Ah, oh, Pa. You heard me? Ah, oh, heck. Bye, Mom. Bye, dear. Bye, Pa. All I can say is that I hope it's one of those phases we hear about. <laughs> That car. It's a wonder to me he doesn't break his neck. And do you realize that we can be sued for the damage he does? It's a little rougher going over in this part of town. But I guess rough going is kind of the rule for people like Joe Krolik. Joe's a gardener. So he'll take any work that's around. I might tell you that Joe and his wife, Hedda, have set their hearts on a great goal. All four of their kids, the three that's here and the one that's coming, they're going to start life with high school diplomas. They're going to get somewhere. Oh, Joe, what do you want for supper? With my belly full of breakfast. Don't talk to me about eating. Say, if Mrs. McCall paid me today for last month, would be good we take the kids to the beach. Maybe cook hot dogs over a fire, eh? Hey. <laughs> oh, Joe, don't forget to have those breaks. Morning, Joe. You haven't been in lately. The usual big two? Today, four gallons. We take the kids to the beach tonight. Well, it's okay. Better take some wood out to the beach, Joe. I was out last Sunday, and the driftwood is about used up. Okay. I'll check those tires. No, no need. You should bother with the tires. Well, you've got troubles enough with those brakes, Joe, without running around on a couple of soft tires. Let me get the hose. We're a little richier up here on the hill, but well, that's okay. Most of them are folks that worked hard, maybe had a little luck, and now are enjoying the fruits of their labors. Now, this house is the residence of the last folks on our team, Dr. and Mrs. Harry I. Marks. Now, Harry, be sure and leave the office in plenty of time. The Davids are coming to cocktails at 6.30, and you have to change before that, and then dinner with the Waldrons, and you know how Thelmer is about sitting down on the dock. Okay, I'll be here. Unless that idiotic young judge thinks up something to the contrary. Well, where did I put that summons? Oh, I think it's unfair. I don't see why your lawyer can't just pay your fine like he always has. Try and get it out of your system before tonight, Harry. Fat chance, officious young fool. Well, I've got a good mind to take this right up to the mayor. Well, our friends are all on their way. They're coming from their different sections of town into the main boulevard, and in a few minutes, we'll find them all drawn together at the intersection of Beverly and Commonwealth. You know, probably not one of them. Oh, maybe, maybe Joe Krolik did and Holly, but I'll bet not one of the others ever stops to think that when you say goodbye to somebody, you may never see them again. Probably what made me think of that is of these five folks now all around us, on their way to their daily affairs. Only four will come home tonight. That's too bad, but that's the way it is. Yeah, there they are, all five. All nice, ordinary folks, like I said. All good drivers, too, with nothing more than the ordinary human failing. Pat Shelby, for instance, a little bit slapdash and thoughtless, sometimes forgets he's not all alone on the road. And Joe Krolik, well, Joe really doesn't have time to keep his equipment in fancy condition. Buddy McCall, <laughs> you know, watching out of the corner of his eye for the first faint gleam of that yellow light. 
Peggy Sheridan's got so many things in her mind, it's just hard to keep thinking about just driving. Dr. Marks can never seem to just relax and take things as they come. Well, there they go, all smart and healthy. It's really hard to believe that one of them will be still and quiet come night. Beverly and Commonwealth. Remember those names. Mr. Brightman, I want you to promise me you won't be back here again. Very high marks. Excessive speed and following too close on preceding vehicles. Guilty or not guilty? Uh, <clears throat> Your Honor, if you will study that file, I believe that you'll agree that the arresting officer should be reprimanded. I'm sorry, for... Dr. Marks. I cannot listen to a statement until you plead. Guilty or not guilty? You can't high pressure me into pleading guilty. Nobody is trying to, Dr. Marks, but you have no legal standing before this court until you plead. Oh, well, perhaps on some silly technicality, guilty. It's utterly absurd issuing tickets like this on some penny ante offense. Well, the city would be a lot better off if the police spent their time chasing criminals. Dangerous driving is criminal, Dr. Marks. A wheel can kill a man as quick as a gun. We have to have rules of the road for the same reason as in basketball and baseball. If each driver obeyed them, all other drivers would know what to expect. 45 miles per hour in a 25 mile zone, following too closely, two prior violations. The fine will be $25. That's utterly ridiculous. $25 for a trivial minor violation? My dear sir, and the rest of you here in this court, let's get one thing straight right now. This court recognizes no such thing as a minor violation. Lucky violations, yes but not minor. The dividing line between a minor violation and a charge of manslaughter is usually a tenth of a second and a lot of luck. All right, all right, where do I pay? On second thought, Dr. Marks, I think it best if you don't buy your way out of this. $25 won't make a lasting impression on you, and it certainly won't teach you proper driving habits. I therefore withdraw the fine and sentence you to three days in jail, or if you so elect, to the remainder of the day at Belmar High School, there to attend all classes of the day in the driver education and training courses. <laughs> uh, Dr. Marsh has been having quite a day. Lately, he's been going through certain driver testing devices which check your tendency to the most common types of accidents. This particular gadget checks how fast you react to various highway emergencies. And the unhappy doctor is finally going to beat young Connie Morris or die trying. When the light flashes, you slap on your brakes. Six tenths of a second. Well, at 40 miles an hour, he'd roll 123 feet before he brought his car to a stop. That's quite a ways. Well, young Connie's licked him again. And no respect for age. Failure to concentrate. And nothing but concentration will help a driver who has what's called tunnel vision. The kind of eyes that see only straight ahead, blind to what may be coming from either side speeding and lane changing. In today's razzle-dazzle traffic, you've got to judge right down to a hair how fast cars are coming at you and just how far they are away. So the idea here is to pull the two model cars exactly even with each other. And it's the poor downtrodden doctor's last chance to win. Well, the 
tide of traffic has turned, and another day is coming to a close. And it did turn out nice for everybody, just as we expected. Peggy Sheridan's got her job. Dr. Marks got an education. Pat Shelby got his lumber contract. Joe Crowley got paid. Buddy McCall got to kiss Betty Bates behind the grandstand. Very successful day. They're all driving along toward home now. Most of them taking a chance on an occasional minor violation, as usual. And most of them getting away with it, also as usual. Can't tell. Take enough chances and you may gain as much as 15, 20 seconds on the homeward trip. I'm sorry you have to see this. It won't be what you call pretty. That's one of our folks in there. I, I guess you knew that. Developments are expected, and the White House will issue a further statement later tonight. On the local scene, a fatal automobile crash a few minutes ago at the corner of Beverly and Commonwealth snuffed out the lives of at least one motorist and a truck driver when the local vehicle outbound on the boulevard, claimed by witnesses to be driving in an erratic manner, burst into flames after colliding with a heavily loaded overland truck and trailer. The driver of the truck was instantly killed, but the fire has so far prevented identification of the local driver. At the state capitol today, the fate of the ref... I can't imagine what's detaining Harry. He's usually so punctual when we have guests. Oh, come now, Sylvia. We heard it, too. But don't go jumping to conclusions. With probably 50,000 drivers coming home along the boulevard, the chances are 50,000 to oh, one. Oh, I know. Harry isn't one of the best drivers in the world, but he's certainly one of the luckiest. I remember just yesterday morning he was driving me to town. You know how Harry is, impatient at times, and he's sort of inclined to ride the bumper of the car ahead. But any wife is going to start imagining what would happen if he got impatient and unlucky at the same instant. That was too much for John. After all, he said to the officer, it was only a minor violation. You can't... Shh. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I heard a cough. Where's Mommy? Mommy, Magda! Billy, don't say such things. Mama's all right. She's always all right. But all right isn't what she's picturing in her anxious young mind. You know, I feel bad enough for the drivers who smash themselves up, but I feel a lot worse for the folks that are left at home, waiting and worrying. I'm hungry. Where's Mommy? Dad. Oh, it's just that Pat's not home yet. No, of course I'm not worried. Don't be silly. You know him and his lucky star. Nothing ever happens to Pat. No, nothing ever happens to Pat. That is, nothing ever has happened to Pat. Uh, I'll have to call you back later. Uh, something's burning on the stove. from the window, it's bad luck to watch. Go to the bedroom, take off your coats, so that Papa won't see you with waiting. Papa wants to have us a swell ride, so he's getting his car fixed. That's all. You remember, she asked him just this morning to get the brakes fixed. But what if he didn't take the time? My watch might be a little fast. Don't know what gave me the idea. Molly, you don't suppose I was a little too harsh with him this morning, do you? Oh, no, of course not, Tom. It's just that he's at that irresponsible age. 
Anyway, he was going to take Betty to the Belmar game after school today, remember? Mm hmm Hey, he's got to get rid of that, that gasoline pogo stick. It, it isn't safe. It should be safe. He's young and smart. Of course, there are other drivers on the same road, not so young and smart. Hello, Mother. Hi, Pop. Isn't dinner ready yet? Oh, buddy. Pop, what's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. Buddy, you've got to get rid of that car. You've had your mother scared half to death. What's the matter with my car? Don't blame me for being late. I hit 70 on the way home. Blame that dopey old driver that crawled over in front of me without looking. Say, how about a little dinner? I'm hungry. Ah. Well, Lily, <laughs> go get your hat and coat. <laughs> you pick up the brake six today? Well, why? She stopped fine with the emergency. I get her fixed sometime. <laughs> So, we got the picnic like I promised. Yeah, get the milk from the oh, ice cream. Uh. Oh, evening, folks. Oh, Harry. Hello, Ida. Hello, Harry. Evening, George. Sorry to hold up the schedule this way, but... Uh, Are you all right, dear? Well, of course I'm all right. No thanks to the kind of drivers we've got in this town. You know, I've said it for years. Hey, what are you hanging on to me for, Sylvia? Ninety percent of them, you know, have no right to be alive. Going like maniacs, cutting across traffic, gawking away from the road, jumping lanes, running stop signs. And uh, following too close? Huh? Okay, okay, following too close. And what do they say when they get a ticket? It was only a minor violation. Well, believe you me, the only difference between a minor violation and sudden death is a tenth of a second and God's providence. Anyone here see this accident happen? Uh, I saw it. All right, you might have your name. Edward J. Smith. Will you follow me over here, please? I'll be glad to. The books all say we learn by experience. Well, sometimes I wonder. Young Buddy McCall, for example. Joe Krolik. Both of them brushed hands with death today. Neither of them seemed to learn anything. They'll drive the same way tomorrow, take the same chances. Maybe they'll even keep on being lucky, maybe for quite a while. Like I said, it makes you wonder. We may have to call you. Well, I certainly hope you do. It's nothing short of murder to drive an automobile like that. Yeah, you'd think so. But until somebody got in the way, it was nothing but a minor violation. The driver picked the wrong time, that's all. 61T, 61T, correction on your last call. Should be 1056 North Cedar for notice on accident victim. Hey, that's right up near me, just south of Hillsdale. One of them courts. I'm nearly out of my head, Daddy. It's his bowling night, and he's always early. I just know something's happened to him. Isn't there anything you can do? It stopped. I think it's Mama's car. She's all right. Pat? Is that you, Pat? Mama? Oh, Mama? Well, which one of us is going to break the news this time? Well, I'll flip your for Heads. You're up. All right. And uh, send a man up from welfare to look over the papers and property. No, not much. Seems to be no surviving relatives. The father is dead. Better send out a plain car with a police matron. Oh, and ask the lieutenant to see if St. Mary's will take them in for the night until there's a formal commitment. But, darling, I thought you were dead. What made you so late? Oh, one of those badge happy cops hung a ticket on me. Even so, I made it all the way out in 21 minutes. Made every light. If you're not too legal about a couple of yellows. Oh, now, don't worry about the ticket, baby. Three bucks will cover it. It was only a minor violation. It was only a minor violation. 